Hi everyone, it's Renee with Delaney Jane Cards. Welcome back to my channel. Today I am featuring Chick Chickadee Crafts um, Etsy shop. They have some adorable uh, digital images and I wanted to show um, some additional ways that you can use digital images. Here I used the digital image file to create my own background paper. I just t uh, twisted and turned the digital image to um, fill in the background. And then I also resized and layered them to create this train of elephants because you know the baby always hangs on to the mama's tail. Pulled out some dies here. This is a Gina Marie die and I really do love the fancy edge on that. And then Mama Elephant, of course, for the bow. And that's a basic die set that I have from her. Uh, from her. I don't know. Was Mama Elephant owned by her? <laughs> anyway, here's the kind of the layout of what it's going to be. But that would be so plain. Oh, and then I have these pink and main dies here. I just love how bright pink the pink and main dies are. They, I have, I struggle to lose them on my desk. And I, I don't want to get good at that. But I do struggle to lose those on my desk. Um. But this would be so plain and kind of boring if I just left it black and white. I mean, it would be okay, but I feel like it would be plain and boring. So I thought I would um, try some ink blending on it. Now I pulled out some Distress inks here. And I used, and this is, um, what is it, lipstick? Whatever the lipstick one is. I'll have it on the screen. Uh, I used a blending brush, this is a Trinity Stamps blending brush, and I have some Dollar Tree blending brushes there. I'm just blending on the ink on, on this panel, and I am going to go pretty far in with the pink. Uh, the pink is going to be my dominant color, um, but you see there I have a gray and a black um, that I'm going to blend into the pink, because elephants are gray and black. <laughs> So I covered the whole thing. I wanted that to be kind of the undertone of the whole panel. And um, it's not very good ink blending. Don't learn anything from this. What I will say is I used Nina 80 pound cardstock. Uh, it blends okay for me as long as I put enough ink down. I don't really like to use Bristol for my ink blending. I feel like um, I leave too many fingerprints on it. And I also feel like it's kind of expensive for me to be ink blending on. I, I don't know. I'm cheap. And then um, here is the gray. I'm using this Dollar Tree blending brush or makeup brush. It works. It works okay too. And here I was trying to see if my ink pad was dry. And I think this one is kind of dry. So I decided I was going to use my foam blending tool. And I do just keep the, the ink blending pad underneath they fit right in the little squares. I don't have any of the big distress inks. I just have the little ones and I'm pretty sure I'm about due for some refills. So if anybody sees a really good deal on refills, I need to know about it. <laughs> and then uh, once I had a bunch of this gray blended on, I was I definitely needed more contrast. So I did bring in the black down at the bottom and um, blended that out. Really, the gray was just kind of a base coat for this black because I was able to blend that nice and light. And that's it. I think it's black, so the Distress ink is black. Um, and I just blended those together, and I really liked how that blended together. And then I used my Trinity brush here again to just add some more of that worn lipstick. I don't know. I always think hot lips from MASH when I say that one. I think it's worn lipstick. <laughs> and then I used this shimmer spray. And I just kind of tapped it on there. I do have those two big globs at the bottom. And I should have just tried to pick them up. But instead I kind of smeared them. That was dumb. Don't do that. Um, but I did salvage this. I will show you how I salvaged it. <laughs> and then I wanted to bring out the elephants more. So here, um, because this, the reason I did this on Nina is because I, I knew I wanted to kind of color these elephants. Um, so I used R22 and R24 here to just add a little bit of color to the elephants that are in the pink part of this now patterned paper. It's one really cool thing about digital images is you can make them as big or as small as you want. And I'm currently working on a 
project for a very special family member and it involves lots of elephants and um, that's why I chose this image this month. I really wanted to add an additional element into additional elephant element into my I don't know rep repertoire, my collection, my tools. Anyway, I wanted to use another elephant, so that's why I picked this one. But I just was adding a little bit of shading here. Nothing really too fancy. This is just the background paper. I just wanted them to kind of stand out a little bit more. I thought that they would, this would be kind of sweet as a baby girl birthday card uh, or like a welcome baby or at a baby shower. And then um, these elephants here that are kind of mixed between the pink and the gray, I did start them with the pink. And then I finished them with the grays. And I just used my cool tone grays here um, to add a little bit of color to the elephants. I just thought that they popped out a lot more and um, I did use a darker gray down here at the bottom. This is C5, so the other one was probably C3. And just filled in the elephants. They were harder to see down at the bottom because that black coat is pretty dark and they were not like embossed lines because they came out of my printer. So they're really fine lines, but I did fill in the elephants and then I decided that I wanted to add a little bit of gel pen detail. So I did go around and I added the same gel pen spots on all of the elephants on the back of their ear and on their backs. And I just kind of wanted to pull the elephants out so they didn't disappear in the background. So that is what I was doing here. And that is my favorite number 10 jelly roll pen. I just like how it works. After I warm it up on my finger, it works so well, glides really nice. And I always get really nice white lines. So that's why I choose that one. So here's the main image that I'm going to be using. And I'm gonna color this with my um, cool gray markers. I have C2, C4, and C6. On the background, I used C3 and C5. So um, same cool gray family, but uh, different markers. And I did that because my C3 is so dry, which I just ordered a refill. <laughs> uh, so hopefully that will get here soon because I deemed that to be um, important. <laughs> I, need, I need my C3 refill. Um, but here I have this camera angle here so you can really get in and see how the marker works on the paper and like I said I run this Nina through my printer and I don't get any streaking or um, any like smearing and that C2 is a really light color and I know that it's a gray but I really don't find I get too many um, like smears. I wouldn't recommend my printer because um, it's a terrible printer and it doesn't ever work right. We always have to shut it off and turn it back on and shut it off and turn it back on. But um, it does a good job printing things. So that was good. And I think this was the last time I used my silhouette too because that is now acting up. If you've been here before, you know me and technology. We're not best friends. So um, I talked through all this coloring. <laughs> all I really did was fill it in added some shadows where I thought it needed some shadows and then blended it back out. C2, C4, C6, um, C4, C2. And that is what we get right there. And then I believe I used the R20, oh, I used the C5 or C7 I, for the toes and then I used the R24 for the face and then I added, or for the mouth, and then I added a little of the R22 for the cheeks and added a couple little white dots to the cheeks because that makes them so much cuter in my opinion and added some little white gel pen details to these little elephants. For some reason these little elephants are drawn to me they look like little toy squeakers so they just kind of feel plastic when I am coloring them so I highlighted them like they were little plastic squeaker toys. I just thought that, that would be cute for a baby card. So here we are back on the other angle and you can see how well these go together because the colors coordinate. Um, so here is that that die that I want to use and I did die cut that out of some more Nina which is just the rest of what I had run through my silhouette there. I made sure that there was some extra space so that I could uh, die cut my pieces so I didn't waste anything and then um, I also 
it wanted my bow to match. So I did ink blend a little spot so that I could run this bow die through my die cut machine. And I just used that worn lipstick uh, to blend that out with that same Trinity blending brush. Any of those brushes will work just fine, I think. And then I use um, repositionable or removable scotch tape when I run things through my die cut machine. I find it works amazing and it doesn't leave, it doesn't get stuck to my paper, first of all, and it doesn't leave any um, pressure marks because it's so thin. So um, that's what I've been using. Um, for the inside of the bow, I did use my red markers to darken up the inside, and then I curled the, the bow parts of the bow, the loops of the bow, around the paintbrush end um, just to add a little bit of dimension so that they weren't flat. But a flat bow looks fine too. And then I adhered all this together, just a little dot of glue in the middle there, held it together with my um, reverse tweezers, which I adore. And then I used the rest of the ink that was on my Trinity blending brush there just to add a little bit of a pink haze to the background where the elephants are going to sit. And then I finished up my little bow. I like that it's one piece, the, the bow part. Uh, you wrap that little center around and uh, it's not a separate separate piece to get lost. And then it has two different options for bow tails. I just, I think it's a really versatile bow. Uh, so that's the one that I've been reaching for lately. Then I added some foam tape to the back of my sentiment and to the back of my elephants. I wanted them to pop up. Uh, this is going to be beneficial because that bow is going to be kind of dimensional and it will kind of get protected by the dimension of the elephants. So it shouldn't get crushed when it's mailed. Uh, it doesn't, it's not crushed now while it's packaged for, um, for sale in my store uh, and it is in a bin with a bunch of other cards so I think it'll be okay through the mail. So I just added all the bits and pieces there and I just uh, adhered the center or the circle down kind of on the top there. Made sure that there was plenty of room for my sentiment and then I um, layered this so that it at least covered the one like splotch from the shimmer spray. So that one's gone. It doesn't exist. If you didn't watch me make this video, you would never know it was there. So I guess you are now an insider and know the things. And then I adhered the elephant to the center circle and added the bow tails where I wanted them and then added the bow. And I did hold that. I, usually I use my reverse tweezers, but I do think that it was in a little too far. And then I pulled out the sequin mix and I got this from the rabbit hole designs um, when I ordered from them and it's just a pink and white like confetti mix. I thought it would look really good on here. You'll have to tell me should I have gone with something else? I mean it's a baby card. I didn't want to pull out black even though I blended with black. I wanted to kind of keep it soft, but I don't mind putting black on a card. I think it definitely helps sometimes break up pattern papers, but I was also making my own pattern paper here. Um, so you'll have to let me know. What do you think of sequins and um, stuff like that? Do you, do, are you a fan or would you rather use things like Nouveau Drops or um what's the glitter called? Stickles or um, enamel dots. What is your go-to for an embellishment? I'm curious because for a long time I was team no way am I using a sequin on a card and now I kind of like them. I, I don't know. <laughs> Sometimes a card just calls for a sequin. Sometimes it calls for a new full drop or a piece of thread or like here I knew it needed something else and I did eventually pull this heart back in and then I shaded it. I die cut it from the same little piece that I ink blended and then I shaded it with my markers because they do match that worn lipstick really really well and then I went around the edges. I didn't want the white of the edge and a Copic marker when it comes to the paper, the paper will suck up the ink so it it's really good for going around something like this that is a solid color. Uh, if I was just trying to go around the edge, I would have got a water-based marker out. And then I added a little bit of glossy accents to this little heart just to make it pretty. 
I thought what a sweet little thing, a mama elephant and a baby elephant and um, pink and gorgeous. Now this is some Nouveau Vintage Drafts and these are actually in the color Colonial Blue. They looked really great to me. Um, I got these from a friend in the mail and they are supposed to um, dry matte. And I am a huge, huge fan of matte finish. I wish I had more of those because this was the first time trying them out and I really, really, really liked them. Did I say really enough there? Uh, so when I did die cut these with my machine, I did die cut or mechanically or silhouette cut or whatever. I told it to cut this out. So I used it on the inside. It says congratulations on your baby. And I just added this beautiful little panel that I made to the front and has that cute little scallop border. And I think that it definitely is a really cool detail on here. So I'd love to know what you think and um, if you have any opinions on my card and what embellishments do you use. Uh, check out Chick Chickadee Crafts dot etsy dot com for your own images and i will chat with you next time thanks for stopping by and as always give cards generously bye